Hello, my name is CJ Ren, and today I'm going to be making a full lead sheet with rhythmic cues above the staff. I'm opting to just recreate the lead sheet of four from the new real book. This project will include all our standard transpositions as well as clefs such as bass clef for our trombone players. I will be creating this project using a completely blank template so you can learn how to do some of the project setup and engraving rules that we need to be doing for this project. But I'm also going to be releasing this project as a template so you all can use it for your own personal and commercial use. Hey everyone, as I'm editing this video, I found that it's just about 30 minutes long. So please get a coffee, get a snack, and sit down and get ready for a nice, thorough, long-winded tutorial on Dorco. Now let's get back to the video. To get started, let's open up Dorco and make sure we're in our Steinberg hub. From here, click Create New. We're going to go to Empty and give it a project title. I'm gonna call it four since I'm remaking four. I'm just gonna leave the composer blank for now. I'm not gonna mess with the page, the key, or the time signature because I will be doing that all in my project. Click create project. Notice when we create an empty project, we're automatically brought into the setup page because we actually don't have any players yet. The way this project will work is we're gonna insert different instruments using our different transpositions, such as an alto sax for E flat parts, a trumpet for B flat parts, and a trombone for bass clef parts and we will write this all into a C part and then we'll copy and paste it and we'll also have a dedicated staff just for rhythm section hits and what we will do is add our cues to our players and then format those parts so we can print different transpositions all with only having to actually format one part. Let's begin by adding our players. First I'm going to click add a single player and I'm going to look for a C trumpet and I'm going to use that as my concert pitch treble clef instruments. Select and click add. Now let's add our B flat transposition instrument. Come down to this little sign here and click add single player. We're also going to be looking for a trumpet, but we're going to be inserting a B flat trumpet. Click add. The next transposition we need to add is for our E flat instruments. Come back down to the add single player button and we're going to look for an alto sax. Once you find your alto sax, make sure it's selected and click add. The next staff we need to add is for a bass clef and for that we can simply insert a tenor trombone. Once again, come down to the add single player button. We're going to look for a trombone and we're going to insert the standard C bass clef transpose pitch trombone. Click add. So now you may notice I have this empty handed player. That actually happened be because I clicked the add single player, but I backed out of the dialogue and it basically created this empty player that has no instrument or staff attached to it. If that happens to you, all you have to do is select it, come down to the little delete here and click delete. You can select delete player and part layouts. Unless you wanna add any other transpositions such as an F transposition for a French horn player, all we need to do now is add a grand staff so we can write some rhythmic cues and that will also enable us to write bass lines so that we can cue in our parts. To add our grand staff, we're once again going to click add single player, just search for a piano, and we're going to insert the default piano. Select it and click add. While there is no particular order we need to put these in, I typically have an order that I personally like to think about. First, I put my treble clef staff at the top, I put my B flat transposing instrument under that, then I put my E flat transposing instrument, then I put my bass clef staff, and then I put my grand staff for piano. The next thing we need to do is appropriately name our part so they just show the transposition followed by lead sheet. The easiest way to do this is to simply just rename each of these staffs to what their transposition is. Simply right click the first one and we're going to click rename and we're just going to rename the player to C in both the full name and the short name. If you want to change it to concert to signify concert pitch, I personally prefer just to put C for C lead sheet. Let's repeat this process for other transpositions. Simply rename our B flat trumpet it to just B flat and do that in the short name as well. We will rename our alto sax to E flat. We will also do that in the short name. For our trombone, I'm going to rename this to bass. So it says bass lead sheet on the part. I'm going to put bass in both the full and short name. For this project, we're not even going to bother with formatting the score because that is simply to input all our notes in our rhythms so that they can display correctly in our parts we're actually printing. If you want to change the name of your parts that are showing on your score we're editing with, you can select this drop down here so we see the actual player attached to this layout and from there you can edit the names that are appearing on that staff. I will quickly rename all those in a time lapse.
The next step we have to do is to make sure we're showing our slash regions in chord symbols in the right spot. For this, all we have to do is right click each layout and then we can see our chord symbols options and we can see when and where they're showing. We want to make sure they're checked for show in full score and parts and we want to make sure they're also showing for all instruments. This will by default display the chords on all the parts all the time. We have to repeat that step for each of these other layouts. Now that we've done this preliminary setup, we're going to go to our right tab. And from here, we're going to be changing some engraving options, some of which I've actually covered in previous videos and will link to in the description. I will show the process of actually doing it in a time lapse in this video. First off, we go to library and music fonts, and we're just going to select a better font for our lead sheets. And I personally prefer, and I personally prefer to use this handwritten looking Petaluma font. Double click it and it will automatically apply to your score. The next adjustment adjustment we have to make is in our engraving options where we want to be adjusting how our chord symbols will be displaying. You can open the engraving options by going to library and engraving options or you can also click control or command shift E. From here, either search or navigate to chord symbols, and once we're here, watch along in a time lapse as I do the steps to adjust how my chord symbols will display in my parts. I covered this in a previous video, and if you want to follow along, you can watch that video for an in-depth explanation for all the chord symbol settings we use in jazz arranging. The next step I generally take while working on projects like this is actually to change my playback device for all of these instruments to just a simple piano. To do this, all we have to do is come down to our piano, see what channel it's on, and we can assign all our channels to match that for all of our other layouts. Once that is done, come back to write mode, and now we're going to be inserting our notes, and for this, I'm replicating the lead sheet from four. First things first, we're going to select the first bar and click Shift K for the key signatures popover. And we're going to type a capital E with a flat after it and click Enter to enter our E flat major key signature. Next, you will notice we need to have a pickup bar. This is extremely easy to achieve in Dorco even after the fact of creating your layout. Just double click our time signature here. Click the right arrow over just to get after the time signature that's already there. Click comma and we're going to insert the amount of beats needed for a pickup bar which is one and a half or 1.5 and click enter the next step is just entering all the notes from our lead sheet into our concert pitch staff here at the top i'm going to do this in a time lapse so if you want to follow along pause here and enter all the notes or watch the time lapse and follow along as i move into adding rhythm section cue double bar line chords and other elements the only alteration i'm going to make to this lead sheet is having a repeat for our a section and having a first and second ending for our b and c sections Now that all the notes are input, we're going to be adding our repeats, our first and second endings, our double bar lines, everything we need to add. But you'll notice even on this lead sheet over here, I don't really like the beaming that is going on because I think beaming an upbeat to a downbeat eighth note, especially in swing music, is just not really acceptable and it looks better if we leave those isolated and not part of that beaming. Notice how many of those there are in this lead sheet so far. We don't have to go through and manually do that. We can open our notation options. To open our notation options, we can either come up to library and find notation options, or you can do control or command shift N to open it. The notation options have all sorts of useful options. And for us, we're gonna be looking for our beam grouping, which you can select here or you can search it. Once we're in here, we're gonna be looking for a simple time signature with a half bar. Scroll down till you see notation options for beaming with four, four time signature. We have a handful of options, but the one we are looking for is groups of notes in simple time signatures with a half bar. Notice we can either beam together 
even if the group does not fill the half bar, which is what is occurring in our score, or we can only beam together only when the group fills the half bar. This will isolate our lone eighth notes that are upbeats so they don't beam to our downbeats. Select that, select apply, and click close. Our score is starting to look pretty good, especially with this beaming all fixed. What we're gonna do now is add our repeats in our first and second endings. I'll be showing you how I do this with the popovers. The first one we need to add is our begin repeat right after our pickup notes. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that a little more clearly. I'm gonna select that bar line. I'm gonna click Shift B for our bar line popover. And now we can just input with our keyboard what an open repeat looks like. We have to click Shift in slash to create a vertical line and then we'll insert a colon. Notice that looks like an open repeat and then if we click enter it will insert the open repeat. Now I'm going to find where the first ending begins. Notice I just did the last four bars of the B section and the last four bars of the C section as my first and second ending. I opted to do that to save page space and make it fit a little better on the page and then I can make a separate solo sheet for the instrumentalist that just has slash notation. Let's find our first four bars that is going to be our first ending. I believe it's going to be occurring over here. One, two, three, four, starting on this bar, including up to here. Click Shift R and I'm gonna type first ending. Since we inserted a first ending, it automatically put in the close repeat sign as well as noted where second ending is. I now wanna put a double bar line at the end of my A section, which is the first eight bars. Let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We will select the bar line at the end of that eighth bar, click Shift B for a bar line popover, and put two vertical lines and click Enter for a double bar line. There's another double bar line we need to add into this piece, and that's at the end of our form for the melody. Let's go to our final four bars, which start on the second ending, and count one, two, three, four, find that bar line at the end of that bar, click shift B and insert our double bar line. The next step will be creating our rhythms that will become our rhythm cues into our lead sheets that we actually print out. All we simply have to do is add notes wherever we want hits into our grand staff in our treble clef. Click shift N to enter note input mode, and we're just gonna draw these wherever we want them to go because they will automatically convert to rhythm hits later when we actually draw our cues. I'm also going to insert a hit over here. I will repeat this for the next four bars. So here's a hit, a hit on the end of two, a hit on the end of four, hit on the end of two again, and another hit on the end of four. And then the rhythm section will just continue playing time so we don't need any more hits. The next step is to add chords, and I will insert the first couple with you where all these hits go, and then I will jump into a time lapse and finish them out throughout the rest of the form with the melody. The first chord we have to insert is on this rhythmic hit. So select it, click Shift Q for our chord symbols popover and type E flat major seven. If you want to, you can reinsert that chord on all the hits, but I'm just going to go to the E flat minor seven, select it and enter my E flat minor seven. I'm adding this hit in the rhythm section, which is an A flat seven. I will select it and insert my A flat seven. Repeat this process for the hits on the next four bars. I'll select my first hit, shift Q for the chord symbols popover and type my F minor seven in. This repeats for those hits, so I don't have to reinsert them, but I will select this hit where my a flat minor seven goes. Since the rhythm section will keep time through the B and C sections, as well as these last two bars of the A section, I can simply select the downbeat of this bar and enter my D flat seven. Now watch as I complete the rest of the chords for the song in a time lapse. Since the melody ends at this E flat major seven right here, I'm actually going to add rhythm slashes that pick up into the soul slashes I like to provide to my wind players. So simply make a selection of those last two bars. We will click shift R for the repeat structures popover and type slash and click enter. 
Next, we will finally be inserting those rhythm hits above our staff in our lead sheet part. To do this, simply select the first note and select the last note where the cue is going to be drawn. With that range selection, click Shift U for the cues popover and type piano since the piano is the instrument we were drawing our rhythms in. And notice there is a piano A and a piano B correlating to the treble and bass clef staff respectively. Since piano A is right at the top there of that list, we can click tab and it will automatically put that in for us. This cue does not look like what we want quite yet, so what we have to do is edit its properties to make it a rhythm cue. This is really simple. Just select our cue right here, which is currently labeled piano, which we will change. With that selected, notice we have access to the properties down here in the bottom toolbar and we see cues. Very simply, find the selection for a rhythmic cue, turn it on, and let's also check use rhythm slashes and make sure you turn on and check it. And now we have slashes. Clearly we're not done quite yet, but I also want to change the appearance of these slashes so they're a little more obvious in my opinion. I personally prefer the standard slash appearance, so check the slash appearance and make sure standard is checked, and I think they're just a little more legible and easier to read. Now, since I'm displaying this cue above the staff, I want to have my stems going down in this voice just so it's a little more legible, easier to read, and it will also fix this collision error that's happening. To do this, select all the notes in your staff while holding shift to click the first note and the last note. With those selected, open the properties panel and we're going to check this box here of set local properties to globally. This means it'll affect the stem directions both in the score here, but also in our part layout. With that enabled, right click one of the notes, come down to stem and click force stem down. And just like that, everything is starting to look fantastic. Now we just need to repeat that process for the next rhythmic hits that happen in the next four bars. This is as simple as picking our melody, picking the first hit that occurs and holding shift while picking the second hit that occurs. And we will click shift U with that range made and type piano and you will see piano A pops up which correlates to our treble clef just click tab since it's at the top of our list and it automatically draws that cue but we have to configure its settings and also its range let's make sure we select this cue and have our properties open at the bottom we see our cue properties and we will enable rhythmic cue we will select use rhythmic slashes and make sure we check it and we already established that we like the appearance of standard you can choose whichever one you want i just think that one looks the best for our use case Let's select all the notes under these cues and make sure our set local properties is still set to global. Right click one of the notes, go to stem and click force stem down. And now our cues and our notes fit nicely onto this staff. The only other adjustment we need to make to this cue is shortening it. Let's select the cue and hold shift alt or shift option in the arrow key to the left to shorten it according to our grid. And this will remove that extra rest that we have in that bar that we don't need, but don't shorten it so far that we lose that last cue. For both of these cues, you'll notice that it says PNO, which is short for piano. I personally don't think we need any text, or if you do want text, you could write rhythm or you can write hits. Simply select this. Notice that we have an option for start text and end text. I will enable start text and just leave it blank. I'll repeat this for the other cue, but you may notice if you have your signposts on, it's kind of hard to click. So you can actually click behind objects by holding shift alt or shift option. And now I can actually select behind an object that makes it easy to select that cue. Once again, enable start text and don't put anything or put an appropriate label depending on what you prefer. The melody is now done for our first layout and we're going to add all the chord symbols at the end. That way we can copy and paste this into our other layouts and then format one part and then apply that formatting to all the parts and have multiple transpositions with our rhythmic cues done in just a couple steps. I think it's good to create a second sheet of just solo changes for my instrumentals. It especially helps them when learning a new tune just because it's very easy to see the form laid out and where the chords go and it helps them land their lines and really start to understand the piece. Speaking from experience, anytime I've handed out a lead sheet where I create separate solo changes, every single horn player always looks at the solo changes, not the melody for the chords. The way I'm going to format this is having a repeat with a first and second ending, but I'm going to group it into clear A section, B section, and C section because it's a little more relevant seeing the changes and understanding where the form is, whereas the melody, I just want to fit those rhythm slashes on my page with a little more comfort. First, let's draw an 
eight bar slash region for our A section. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I will click shift R and I will type slash. There is our first eight bars of A section. Now you're probably noticing I don't have enough bars at the end of the piece. I'm just going to mouse over. I'm going to make sure my panels are open. I'm going to click this bars and bar lines and I'm going to click end of flow here and insert the appropriate amount of bars I need left for these solo changes, which is 12. Enter 12 and click insert bars. I will repeat the process for adding those slash regions. Select the first bar and hold shift while counting over the amount of bars you want this to be. Notice it's adding the bar numbers underneath, which is also pretty helpful for our players. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, click shift R, type slash, and let's repeat this for the remaining eight bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once again, click shift R and type slash. Now we need to insert our chord symbols. This is really simple because we can just copy and paste them from over here and then just slightly slide them and adjust them to where they actually need to be metrically on our downbeats, beats one and three. I will click control A or command A just to select everything. I will click edit and go to my filter and select Select chord symbols. With those selected, click Control C or Command C, and now we have those copied, and we can simply paste them starting on the first bar of our solo section with Control V or Command V. Now everything is slightly off because this actually started on the upbeat, but what's so great about Dorco is you can move everything on the grid in these bulk operations. Hold Alt while clicking over to the left to slide everything over to its actual position as it was for our melody and then we can make some fine adjustments moving on from here. So now watch in a time lapse as I just line all these up to be on beats one or three. The only thing that needs to change now is because I had my first and second ending only covering the last four bars of the B and C section, I just have to move and copy and paste a couple things. Let me take these last four bars here of chords and I'm going to cut them and paste them to the last four bars and I'll take the first four bars of my B section which is here and copy and paste it to the first four bars of my C section. Now we need to add a repeat structures, which is going to be our first and second endings, including our repeat around our A section. Simply select the start of our solo form. We will click shift B for that bar line popover, and we're gonna make a repeat looking bar line with our vertical slash and then a colon and click enter. Now we can insert our first ending over the eight bars of the B section, which starts right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, I will make that range selection, click shift R for repeat structures and type first ending. It'll automatically put the repeat and automatically designate where our second ending begins. With everything completed for our lead sheets, we simply have to make a selection from the last note here, which is actually a slash to the first note of the piece and copy this with command C or control C and paste it into our other layouts. And now it'll automatically draw those layouts. So when we go to print, they are completed. Looking at this, the bass clef part just seems a little too high for my comfort. So I'll select all the notes in that and I will click command all in down to lower an octave. Let's do our final part formatting by coming up to this full score drop down and selecting our C part. Notice everything looks pretty good, but I just want to set my casting so it's doing four bars across the page. I want to make them a little larger, change my page size, and then put all the solo slashes onto a second page. And then we can apply all that formatting to our other parts so we only have to do it once. Within this part, click Control Shift L and look for a casting in here. Find casting select it and let's check it for a fixed number of bars per system as being four once you click apply you'll notice everything automatically gets spaced out and it looks really good it also automatically excluded our pickup bar from that count because it's bar zero let's do some other general page formatting come to the engrave section of dorico and we want to put all the solo slashes onto a second page simply select the first repeat bar for that solo section make sure our toolbar is open on the left hand side and we're into the first section that lets us do systems in music frames. Click create frame break. 
Let's change our page size to letters so it's a little more comfortable for working with printers. And we're also going to increase the size of everything on our pages. Once again, we will open the layout options with Command Shift L or Control Shift L. Let's navigate to Page Setup and change the size here to letter. And I will change the rastral size to four and click apply. With this completed, all we have to do is copy this part formatting and then maybe change some spelling of chords. To copy our part formatting, come to Setup and select our C layout and we're going to right click it and click Propagate Part Formatting. Within here, we can select B flat, E flat, and Bass. Click OK. And now if we navigate to those parts, you'll notice all the formatting is already completed for us on all our layouts. What we want to do now is add the word lead sheet after our transposition names. If you notice in all our layouts, it just displays the transposition name that we specifically set over here. We want to be able to say lead sheet regardless of what name we put there. To achieve this, we have to navigate to our engrave options and we're going to be working with our page templates. Make sure we have any part selected. I will just be working with our concert pitch part and we are going to add the text lead sheet here and it will automatically apply to all the other parts. To do this, we're going to find our page templates over here in our right hand side toolbar. Double click first and you'll notice we have these kind of codes that represent things that we actually set in our project info. This enables us to do one layout one time and apply it anywhere because it automatically pulls from the information for that layout or for our project. Simply to add the word lead sheet after our transition position, we will double click into this text box and I will put dash lead sheet. It should automatically copy to both pages, but if it doesn't, we will click copy page layout left to right or right to left. Click apply and close. Looking at our part, you'll see the transposition followed by lead sheet on our first page, but not on our second page. That's because Dorico has a separate layout for all the subsequent pages that don't include the title. Simply access this by coming down to our page templates once again, double Double clicking default and we will add dash lead sheet after our code or our system tag for layout name. Double click that, click space, dash space and type lead sheet. This is automatically put to the second page, but it isn't necessarily going to happen that way. It doesn't always. Pay attention that these are actually two different pages with our page number on different sides. This is in case we have more than two pages and it can open like a book. In the case, it doesn't automatically add the lead sheet text onto the other page, manually put it in on that page. Click apply and close. The final action I'm going to perform for this lead sheet is actually going to be fixing the enharmonic spelling of certain transposed chords. If we're looking at the full score view, you'll see that the chords that I wrote for my concert pitch are exactly as we want to see them. But if we go to our B flat layout, we don't necessarily want to read G sharp minor seven and C sharp seven, but would prefer A flat minor seven and D flat seven. This is is a very simple fix. All we have to do is be in the layout we want to change the enharmonic spelling of. Make sure our set local properties are set to locally down here in the properties window. Double click the chord you want to change the spelling of and change it to whatever you prefer. In this case, I changed to A flat minor seven instead of G sharp minor seven. Same thing with the C sharp seven will become a D flat seven. This is now reflected in the part in that bar and it is also reflected onto the score. That wraps up my lead sheet video. Let's take a quick look at each of them and admire how clean our formatting is, how simple it was to create multiple different transpositions, all while really only having to input all the notes and chords on one layout. Thank you for watching my video video. I got a whole bunch of requests to do a very thorough lead sheet video, especially including rhythm cues. So I thought I would take this opportunity to make a nice, long-winded, extremely thorough video for all my viewers. And now this is your reminder that down in the description of this video, I made this project into a template and it's available for you for free. Download it now. I included the project I actually made during this, but also cleared it out so you can get straight to writing the notes and chords for your own own lead sheet. If you enjoy my content, please leave a like and subscribe. I encourage you to ask questions in the comments and in Facebook community groups. Everyone here is willing to help you and we can all learn along the way. As I'm finishing this video, I'm only 15 subscribers away from my first long-term goal I set for myself. I'm very excited to hopefully get to 500 subscribers with this video. So once again, hit that like, subscribe, and thank you for watching my videos.